Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. <coughs> Sorry boys. In today's video, we are going to be discussing the super interesting case of the Papin sisters. They lived in France and were born in the early 1900s. And they actually ended up teaming up together to do some pretty evil stuff. Christine Papin, or Papin, I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced but she was born in 1905 and her younger sister Leah was born in 1911 and they were live-in maids so they lived in a house with an extremely wealthy family and were their maids and ended up killing two of the people they worked for these sisters came from a pretty troubled family their parents were Clement and Gustav and they had some relationship issues and suspected one another of infidelity at times but Clemence became pregnant with their first child and since she became pregnant they got married and in 19 their first daughter named Amelia was born. Now Amelia is not one of the sisters that carried out this crime. Gustav was suspecting that his wife was actually having an affair with someone she worked with at the time and he wanted to move to a new city. So he found a new job in a city not too far away, but kind of far away, and suggested to his wife that they move, but she literally said to him that she would rather commit suicide than move. He started to drink heavily after this, and their marriage just kind of fell apart. They grew very distant from one another, and it was just not the best situation unfortunately and when Amelia was about nine years old her mother sent her to a Catholic orphanage and she actually ended up becoming a nun and later revealing that her father had actually raped her before she was sent to this orphanage so she was under nine years old but on to Christine and Leah so Christine as I said was born in 1905 her parents weren't the most enthusiastic about raising another child together so she was actually given to an aunt and uncle who raised her until she was about seven years old and then she was sent to a catholic orphanage as well she decided she really wanted to be a nun but it was something that her mom really didn't want for her her mom wanted her to get a job and be like an independent woman christine didn't really show like behavioral problems too much she would sometimes not like to follow directions and like have a snarky attitude but don't we all? <laughs> and next up, Leah was born in 1911, and she was given to a different uncle when she was born. She too was sent to a Catholic orphanage. I don't know why this family was getting rid of all of their children, but she didn't go to that orphanage until she was 15, which I found interesting. Apparently her um, uncle that she was living with passed away, and since she was not yet legally an adult, she needed some place to go. When they were adults, the two sisters, Christine and Leah, decided to work together as maids in a bunch of different houses in their area in France. They did all types of cleaning and cooking work for all different types of families, and sometimes they would work together, sometimes separate but they really preferred to be put on jobs together. As I'm sure most people, you know, would rather be placed with their sibling, but I don't know, would you get sick of them? That's, I, I don't know. <laughs> One of these families, and the final family that they ended up working for was the Lancelin family. The husband and wife of this wealthy family offered Christine and Leah the position to live in the house as well as work for them, and they were totally cool with that. And this was in 1926. So Christine was 21 and Leah was 15. Now this family had a couple of daughters, but only one still lived in the house because the other was older and lived off on her own. This daughter's name was Genevieve. Things were going pretty well with their job and you know, nothing too crazy was happening until the mother of the household, it's a French name and I know I'm gonna butcher it, started to develop some really intense depression and anger issues and violence issues and she started to take all of that out on these two sisters. Apparently it started out as sly little verbal comments and then it turned into worse verbal abuse and then into smaller physical things like pushing all the way up to slamming the girls' heads against 
walls. There reached a point where Christine and Leah were like, fuck this, we don't want to be treated like this anymore. So it was Thursday, February 2nd, 1933 seven years after they became employed by the Lancelin family. Apparently, the father of the household was supposed to meet Genevieve and the mother of the household for dinner at a family friend's house. So they were all supposed to meet there. Now, earlier in the day, Genevieve and her mom were out shopping and just living life. Out on the town, out in the city, I don't know what I'm saying. But then they returned and noticed that there were no lights on in the house and they were like, uh, what? So the Pappen sisters told them that Christine had accidentally plugged in like a bad iron or something and it had caused some sort of electrical issue or power outage in the entire house and this is when the sisters attacked both the mother and her daughter Genevieve so Christine started to try to gouge Genevieve's eyes out while Leah tried to gouge Genevieve's mother's eyes out while Leah continued attacking the mother-daughter duo Christine ran into the kitchen and got a knife and also got a hammer and returned to the scene of this fight. Both Genevieve and her mother were struck very, very hard in the head. So a little bit later, the father of the household comes home and notices that all the lights in the house are out. So he just assumes that his wife and daughter Genevieve have already made their way to the family friend's house for dinner. So he made his way to the family friend's house expecting to see his wife and daughter there but obviously they weren't there and this was when he started to get worried. Apparently this was some sort of dinner party at this family friend's house so his son-in-law which would be Genevieve's older sister's husband decided to come back to his house with him to try to see if Genevieve and her mom were there. The whole house looked completely dark except for in one room and it was the Pappen sisters room. They tried to get into the house but noticed that the door was locked from the inside. It was like bolted shut so they physically couldn't get in. So they actually made their way to a local police station and brought a policeman back to the house to try to help them get into or break into their own house or his own house but instead of actually breaking into the house the police just decided to jump over like a fence or a wall and made his way into the house through the backyard once he was inside he found the bodies of Genevieve and her mother their bodies had been attacked and bludgeoned and hit and stabbed so many times that it is said that you could barely even recognize that they were them and experts who actually work on this stuff a lot and know what they're talking about said that from viewing their bodies they estimated that the sisters were attacking them for probably about a full half hour and to make things even more disgusting, the mother's eyes were completely gouged out of their sockets. They were found near her body while Genevieve's eyes were uh, found in different places. One was near her body and one was like halfway up the stairs. So what the policeman is thinking when he's in this house and he you know, had probably noticed before he jumped over the wall to get into the house that the Pappin sisters room light was on. So he knew that there were probably other people there and he assumed that this attack had been by an intruder who broke into the house since it was such a wealthy family. And so he assumed that the Pappin sisters upstairs would most likely be dead and stabbed with their eyes gouged out as well. So he tries to enter their room upstairs but the door's locked. He knocked and knocked and knocked and tried to call to them but they would not respond or let him in so he actually had to get a locksmith and once the locksmith was able to open the door the policeman discovered these sisters naked 
in bed together and also in the room they found the weapons used in the horrible attack and the hammer that they used in the attack still had hair on it and the sisters immediately confessed to killing them so both of these sisters were obviously arrested and placed in prison but they were not placed in the same cell or anywhere near each other they were completely separated for obvious reasons and this really upset both of them they really 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 wanted to be with each other and Christine was kind of known and seen as the more dominant sister of the two and she was the older one so it kind of makes sense um, and Leah was so distressed that she couldn't be near Christine in prison that she would act out and not follow orders and just be a piece of crap to deal with honestly and it was really 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 pissing off people that worked at the prison so they finally allowed the two sisters to reunite with each other and apparently one of them threw themselves at the other and like unbuttoned her shirt and it just it really really looked like they had some sort of like sexual relationship with each other and another time in jail, Christine had like an episode where she freaked out and tried to gouge her own eyes out. And obviously this freaked out people that worked at the prison and she tried to say that before she had taken out those murders with her sister, she experienced a similar episode like psychotic episode that made her kind of lose her mind so what the french court ended up doing was actually had three different doctors evaluate the girls psychologically while there had been a history of mental illness in their family these psychological evaluations honestly did not find that they had any like pathological mental disorders and they were completely sane so pretty obviously the sisters were found guilty by a jury and leah was actually given a lesser sentence than her sister christine because it was thought that she was under the influence of christine and she was kind of like peer pressured into murder so leah was only given a 10 year prison sentence christine was sentenced to death via guillotine I didn't know they still used that in the 1900s in France. It was later just changed to life in prison though. Now I found it interesting that when these girls were originally arrested, Christine was the one who was doing better with the separation and Leah was the one that was acting out. But once they were given their sentences, it just seemed that something switched in Christine and she went into severe severe depression and she even reached a point where she straight up refused to eat prison guards would try to force her to eat they physically couldn't get her to and eventually she was actually transferred to a mental institution in a different city hoping that they would be able to help her out but unfortunately christine just continued to not eat and she quite literally starved herself to death she passed away in may 1937. now leah only ended up serving eight years out of her 10 year prison sentence, which I found interesting. She was released from prison in 1941 and got a job as a hotel maid. And she was able to do this because she assumed a false identity. And um, she got this job, she moved into a house with her mom. And there are conflicting reports about when Leah passed away. Some people say she died in 1982, while others say 2001. All in all, I found this case extremely interesting i had never heard of something quite as shocking as this and apparently even though those psychological evaluations decades and decades and decades ago said that they were sane nowadays there is a condition called shared paranoid disorder that seems like it's pretty much what the sisters had. So this essentially happens when two people or more it could be a group of people are isolated from like the rest of the world and just kind of spending all of their time together away from everyone else and they somehow because they're so separated from the rest of the world and isolated they develop extreme paranoia and it's not always logical and usually in these situations with this shared paranoia one person in this pair or group is a little more dominant and like controls 
thoughts of the other a little more if that makes any sense and um, that would obviously have been Christine in this situation let me know what you guys thought of this case as I already said I thought this was so freaking interesting as always please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel also leave a comment down below suggesting other cases you'd like to hear me talk about in the future thank you so much for watching I love you and I'll see you in my next video bye